This is a pack, but not just any pack, it's a cold hot pack. You've probably seen this before, but have you ever thought about how it works? Before that, let's go back to the year 1948. This was the year it was invented, but was known as hot air cold packs instead. Just 25 years later, in 1973, Jacob Spencer made the first reusable hot and cold pack, sold till this very day. These packs can be microwaved to be used as a hot pack or frozen in a freezer to be used as a cold pack. Ice packs can absorb a considerable amount of heat because its enthalpy of fusion is high. There are different kinds of ice packs, among which a sack, bag, or towel filled with crushed ice is the simplest kind. An ice pack or gel ice pack is a plastic sack filled with refrigerant gel. Whereas, there are two types of hot packs, which are electrical heat pack and chemical heat pack. Electrical heat packs usually work on household current and have protection against overheating. They are mainly used for physical therapies. As for chemical heat packs, they apply exothermic reactions such as dissolving calcium chloride, and crystallization usually occurs only when it's undergoing this reaction. Coal packs can be used as coolers to keep perishable foods below the danger zone that is, below 6 degrees Celsius. The danger zone is a temperature that favours the growth of microorganisms that will cause food spoilage. During transportation, the food is transferred out of the refrigerator or a chiller. This causes exposure to the environment. Therefore, to ensure the quality of the food, the food should be kept at low temperatures. This preserves the food and prevents spoilage. Besides that, cold packs are used for treatment of injuries to prevent further swelling. During immediate treatment, ice packs reduce bleeding and prevent internal bleeding. It also prevents the area injury from becoming stiff by reducing excess tissue fluid that gathers. It also helps numb the injured area and results in less pain for the user. As for hot packs, during exercise, muscles are widely used and this often leads to cramp. The pain comes from muscle exertion or strain, which create tension in muscle and soft tissues. This tension can cause blood circulation constrictions, sending the pain signals to the brain. Heat can be used to dilate blood vessels, increasing blood flow and providing additional oxygen and nutrients to help heal the damaged muscles. Also, heat can soften muscles and connective tissue, decreasing stiffness. Heat can also aid in osteoarthritis to increase the range of motion. There are two types of hot packs in general, which are reusable and non-reusable hot packs. Reusable hot packs work in closed systems, which means the reaction can occur and also be reset by itself within the hot pack. Whereas non-reusable hot packs is the type where it cannot reset itself once it's been used once. Inside a hot pack, there is a gel and a small metal disc. Salt in a hot pack is forced to dissolve more even though the salt is already saturated earlier. Further saturation occurs by heating the solution. Since the water contains a lot of salt, the solution becomes extremely unstable. Thus, the metal disc found in the hot pack will break the unstable solution apart. When the hot pack is brought back to room temperature, the salt will create a gel instead of returning back to a solid state, and heat will be the byproduct of the reaction. If we observe closely, the salt, for example calcium chloride, dissolves in water. The salt will dissociate into calcium ion and chloride ions. The salt will dissociate until the solution is saturated where extra energy in the form of heat has to be added so that calcium and chloride ions will be forced out. The more ions that are formed, the higher the temperature will be. The reaction can be expressed in this chemical equation. Calcium chloride plus water 
will equate to calcium ions and two chloride ions. Having an enthalpy change of negative 82.8 kJ per mole, indicating that it is an exothermic reaction. 82.8 kJ of heat energy is released when calcium chloride salt is dissolved in water. When the hot pack is brought to normal temperature, the calcium chloride will start to form a gel again. This reaction will release the same amount of heat energy as used for dissociation of salt. After that, the hot pack will be boiled in water. The purpose of this boiling is to saturate the salt again to form calcium and chloride ions, and it is now ready for use. Ammonium nitrate dissolves as it absorbs heat. When it is doing so, the temperature of the system, in this case is water, has a lower temperature and thus can be used as a cold pack. Besides that, cold packs occur spontaneously despite the positive change in enthalpy because the change in entropy is more influential. The heat loss from the surrounding of the cold pack lowers the entropy of the surrounding and even larger increase in entropy of the system. This will affect the system to become so much more disordered with the dissolved ions than the original crystal powder that the change in enthalpy is negated. Based on the second law of thermodynamics, the entropy of the universe is always increasing, whereby the change in entropy of the system plus the change of entropy of the surrounding is more than zero. That is why for a spontaneous reaction to occur, given that the change in ent of enthalpy of the surrounding is more than zero and the change of entropy of the surrounding is less than zero, therefore, the change of entropy of the system has to be more than zero. The inner pouch of a regular coal pack contains regular water and sometimes infused with a liquid chemical. When purchased, the chemical reaction has not occurred yet, which means the water and the chemical are at room temperature leaving them in their original liquid form. The outer pouch of the cold pack contains a type of dry substance existing in powder form, which is usually ammonium nitrate. It is sealed off from the water in the inner pouch. To begin the endothermic reaction, users are required to twist, squeeze or bang the pack. The action breaks the temporary seal between the inner and outer pouches, releasing the dry chemical ammonium nitrate into the water. In cold packs, the chemical ammonium nitrate is often used because it absorbs a lot of heat energy when it dissolves in water. In other words, ammonium nitrate dissolves in water endothermically and the cold pack can go down to a temperature as low as 0 degrees Celsius. <laughs>